Just when you think an LED lamp couldn't get more minimalist, they bring out a new chip. And I'd like to thank Ron from the Netherlands for sending this picture. That's all I've got. All I need is a picture to reverse engineer this and see what they've done. There's no data sheet available for this chip, but we can kind of work out and Ron kind of worked out what's actually involved here. So the one thing that seems to be missing off this circuit board is a bridge rectifier. And that's because this chip appears to be doing the bridge rectification from the AC to the DC and also the current regulation through the LEDs. So before I go any further, I'm going to add a bit of colour to this picture. I'm going to outline the details and then we can sort of see the circuit layout and then I'll show you the schematic for this. One moment, please. We now have colour. Let's explore. This uh, picture wasn't taken with my usual illumination system. It was taken by Ron using available lighting, so there is a bit of a shadow here. It's just how it is. So this chip here can almost be divided with a dotted line to the bridge rectifier section in here and then the current regulation section in here. And it starts with the uh, wires coming from the back of lamp holder. There's nothing on the back other than just a wire and a resistor. The resistor is to limit the inrush current to this capacitor and to basically uh, result in a softer ramp up when initially powered up to protect the transistor in this chip before it sort of started regulating. It also has a built-on fuse in here, but the resistor will also double as a fuse. But the incoming AC supply goes straight to the bridge rectifier end of this chip. The chip, incidentally, is a dual watt chip. It's a uh, Based on, it's basically JW1981, but they've got a B added in here to suggest the bridge rectifier because as it stands, the chip in its own, the JW1981, is just purely a current regulator, a linear current regulator. But they've added the bridge rectifier into that, but there is no data sheet available for it. I've not seen a data sheet for it. Uh, it's just one of these things that it's not really aimed at people like us, it's aimed at the lamp manufacturers. The output of the bridge rectifier then goes to the capacitor. The electrolytic capacitor, I'm going to make a wild guess, roughly 4.7 microfarad would be, at 400 volts would be a typical value of that. And there is, uh, hidden down here, a 500k uh, resistor, 510k resistor, 514, 51 and 4 zeros. And that's mainly, it helps discharge this resistor quickly, but it also means that when you... Um, when you have a so, it prevents that thing that slight capacitive leakage through the switch cables can make these lamps glow very slightly because of the circuitry being very simple and the LEDs being super sensitive. So the positive goes to the uh, capacitor, negative goes to the capacitor, but the positive also goes to one end of the LED string. Now these LEDs aren't just standard LEDs. They have multiple chips in them, typically adding up to over 50 volts per chip. And when you've got all five of these chips in series, as in this case, it comes very close to the peak mains voltage. It'll be somewhere close to, I'd guess that at full current, they'll probably go up to maybe about 60 volts. It's going to be about 300 volts perhaps across them. And that's close to the uh, voltage across this uh, smoothing capacitor when the AC sine wave that is the, it's charged up to the peak of that sine wave. And that means very little is left to drop across the this this the linear regulator in here. The reason they do that is because uh, it's the simplest, cheapest way to do things. Is the circuitry wise is to have a very high string of voltage. Oh God, I'm just messing this up. A very high voltage string of LEDs, and then just drop a small amount across the uh, regulator, but enough that as the mains voltage fluctuates up and down, and to cover a wide voltage range, it can just compensate within that. If you were to go even easier and replace this with just a fixed resistor, then you'd find that as the mains voltage fluctuated, as things like loads came on, like heaters, the lights would flicker up and down in intensity. The LED circuit here also has really fat tracks. The reason for those is to couple the heat from the LEDs as far as possible over the uh, circuit board area to couple it onto the aluminum at the back for the cooling. Once it's been round the LEDs, it comes back to the current regulator and it'll flow through the current regulator and then it'll go through these sense resistors. There's a position for two sense resistors, but they've only got one in here. I think that's 18 ohms. Hard to say. It's not quite clear. 
But by measuring the voltage across that, when it reaches 0.6 volts or so, it then starts cutting the current back and it just monitors the voltage across that to regulate how much current is flowing through the LEDs. And that is more or less it. They could go a bit simpler. They could do what some of the Chinese modules from eBay do. They have no capacitor, but that allows them to be dimmed. However, the price of that is that because there's no smoothing, it's a got absolutely horrific 100 and 120 hertz flicker uh, when it dims, particularly at the sort of low le level settings when it's literally the LEDs are just lit for a fraction of the time. Let me grab my notepad and show you this schematic. Here's the schematic. So here's the GWB 1981 chip. There's the resistor. I'll make a wild guess that that's going to be 30 ohms. It usually is in these things. Uh, there's the smoothing capacitor. Again, I guess 4.7 megafarad, 400 volts with a 510 k resistor across it. So this effectively acts as that bridge rectifier, but it's got these extra pins here. It's got the LED input and the sense. And uh, it will have basically a couple of transistors and some extra circuitry in there to actually act as a sort of current regulator. And that's really about it. All you can really do is change these resistors. In the case of uh, the original lamp, if you wanted to, this will almost certainly be baking these LEDs. It's a cheap lamp. That's what they do. So in that instance, you could effectively, you could uh, remove, snap off this LED. It's usually easier just to, uh, this resistor, break it off. And then using the existing wetted solder pads, you could then solder a quarter watt resistor, just basically tuck a quarter watt resistor like that across it. And that will let you program the current down to a much lower level so that the lamps last longer. But that's it. It's an odd thing that they've done. I suppose it makes sense because this now contains, apart from LEDs, this contains all the semiconductors. It contains the switch components and the bridge rectifier diodes. So there must be an advantage to integrating that all into one package. But that's it. It's interesting. I'm kind of looking forward to one of those lamps coming available over here just to add it to my collection of weird lamps. But there we go. That was interesting. So thanks to Ron for sending that. It's been interesting just following the tracks out on the circuit board to reverse engineer it. And it is an interesting and streamlining, streamlining approach to simplifying LED lamps even further. Very interesting.